probably do something kind of fun. I uh, went on the internet and I downloaded a two-dimensional drawing of a bike rack. And I'll zoom in on this so you can take a look at it. This is a bike rack that looks like a bicycle. You can see we have a front view and we have a top view. Uh, if we look down at the bottom on our notes, we see that the material is two and a quarter inch steel welded tube, <coughs> which is circular tube, with a steel base plate and anchor studs. Uh, comes in black finish, yada yada. But what I'd like you to do is draw this as a 3D model. Um, and it's really <coughs> not as hard as you might think. Um, I'll kind of run you through this, but it kind of makes us uh, uh, give a little bit more thought to, to how these things are, are, are put together in 3D. Um, so I'm going to publish a PDF file of this up on our first class site, and uh, and uh, I'm going to do a demonstration of it here on the video so you can kind of follow along. So I'll do the best I can to make this as close to the actual product as possible in 3D. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our settings, design file, make sure you're working in inches, accuracy to the nearest uh, 16th of an inch should be enough based on what I'm seeing for dimensions here. Okay, <coughs> so I've printed out a copy of this, I'm going to have it next to me. First of all we're going to draw the two wheels. You can see those are an outside diameter of 35 and 3 8 inches. And then it's tube steel. So remember that when we're drawing this in 3D. We also have a spacing down here from center to center of 43 and 11 16 So you don't need to remember that. I actually have it printed out and you should print out a copy and have it next to you. Let's go to our models tool and we're going to create a model design 3D and let's call it uh, bike rack called Big Red and uh, full scale just say OK. Close this out. I want to go into a wireframe mode. I pulled this off a of DWG so I'm going to uh, I think it has a you shouldn't have this problem. I'm going to attach uh, <coughs> our standard color table. Hit OK. So now we got the black background. It, came from an AutoCAD. So the first thing we're going to do, look at our levels. Uh, I don't really need any of this stuff, so this came off the, the 2D model, so pay no attention to it. I'm going to draw this model in level 0. Actually, I'll give, let's give it a new level. We'll kind of call it 3D model bike rack. Sometimes you get kind of this weird stuff when you bring drawings in from other people. Uh, but again, I thought it would be kind of fun. So I'm going to keep, we're in 3D model bike rack, color zero. We're going to take a circle. We're going to draw a circle that is uh, a radius of, and I want this to be the center of the tubing. So what I did is I took the 35 and 3 eighths for the outside diameter, and I'm subtra subtracting the thickness uh, or the diameter of the steel tube itself which is two and a quarter inches. So this is going to be a 33 and one eighth inch radius, or excuse me, diameter. Uh, so I'm going to type in 33.125 divided by 2. That should give me the radius of 16 and 9 sixteenths. There it is. We know that that wheel gets copied center to center 43 and 11 sixteenths. So let's take our copy tool. I'm going to grab this right by the center, move it in this direction. We're going to type in 43 space 11 slash 16. There's our two wheels. I hope I I hope I'm not getting myself in over my head. So we'll see see how it works out. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, let's let's go ahead and and make these wheels the the proper di uh, tubing on them. So we're going to go to our solids modeling tool and remember R3 is solid by extrusion along a path. Get my tool to come up here. There it is. And we're going to say it's a circular. It has an inside radius of uh, let's say inch and three quarters. Uh, no. 
It's a two and a quarter inch diameter steel. So we know the outside radius is going to be 1.125. Inside radius would be 1.125 divided by 2, or 9 sixteenths. <coughs> See if this works. So we're going to left click on this um, circle, left click again, there's our circle, or our tubing. Do the same thing on this one. Okay, pretty easy. Um, we then have a circle in the middle that actually lines up with our center points here that is kind of our pedal area for this bike and it's going to be um, it's going to be a uh, it shows an outside diameter of eight and a quarter so again it's the same stock so we're going to take eight and a quarter minus two and a quarter uh, it's going to give us a six inch diameter center line I'm going to do this in a different color so it shows up better. I'll actually, yeah, I'll keep my line weight zero. I think that shows up okay for you. Take our circle, and what I want to do is I'm going to draw a line from this center point to this center point. I'm also going to go to my settings, view attributes, and turn off that ACS triad. I don't need to see that, so it just makes it less confusing. So what this does now is you can see it gives me a center point. I'm going to draw a circle here that's going to be three inches. And now if we extrude that with our solid by extrusion along a path, we'll see that it's going to be the same diameter. You'll notice that these touch. Okay? These are going to be welded pieces together. So if we actually rotate this around, oh shoot, I made a, a blunder in that I drew this in a Let's change this to a front view. You can see my wheels are off here too, so I'm going to go right side and we're going to rotate, just flip this up. So hopefully, note to self, uh, oops, rotate two points and yes, there we go. Stand it up. And I want to take this circle. I guess I'll select it first. Take it here, hit the enter key, and just lock it to the center. So now if we go to an isometric, we see our our wheels are starting to show up here. There's what our bike rack is gonna kinda look like. Rotate it back to a front view change it back to a wireframe and um, I probably want to set my ACS plane snap on go to my top view and uh, I think what happened is that line I drew just got s centered wrong so I'm gonna we'll delete that line everything else should be fine go to our front view <coughs> now what we have is this is let's draw a center line here so we can see and I'm not going to make it fancy we're just going to and this is a center line here that is also used to model this this up you can see it lightly on the PDF file um, the angle of the main um, axis on this is 18 and a half degrees off from this center line. So I need to draw a line, a rotate and copy. We're going to set an active angle on this of 18.5 degrees. We're going to grab this negative 18.5 because I want it to go the other way so that is the angle and I think I need to go to my settings design file working units axis angle angle readout 
that's what we need two decimal places so I went to settings um, design file angle readout just make sure you're up at least two decimal places there <clears throat> just to make sure that worked again we'll go to our angle mode active angle is going to be negative 18.5 or 341.5 degrees just left click on this and come down to the center point and what that is is the angle of you can see those are not in the right ax, uh, z depth so I'm going to move those what I should have done was turned on my uh, Oh, let's go front view and window tile. So I'm going to set my Z depth, which is right there. In this view, I want it to be centered. So that should keep those all centered now. All right, so now. We'll maximize this, do a fit view again. <coughs> the height of that pipe, uh, actually to the top of the seat, we're going to call it 39 and a half, which is the, actually the height of the handlebars also. Uh, and I think that's that's what I'll use. Actually, we'll cut, let's let's go ahead and do it, and then we'll cut it later. Um, go to your same diameter steel. We're just going to grab this pipe and click it you can see that it's um, sticking down into the center of this so I'm just gonna grab that piece and move it right to there look at it in the top view make sure yep see we, we still have our um, ACS plane lock on now if I take this pipe and I do a subtract solids and I want to keep the last meaning the circle here and I select this pipe and I select this you see what that should do is cut that pipe now let's take a look at it <coughs> as an illustration and see if it did what we want it to do I think it did you can see how that's a nicely fitted pipe on the sleeve so we'll rotate it back to a front view change it back to wireframe, do a fit view here and we also have at the same angle off the top of the tire um, and I'm trying to determine it's right off the center line again at 18 and a half degrees so I think if we took this pipe right here and copied it to this point, no, it doesn't go up high enough. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's ten and seven sixteenths. So what I need to do is copy this vertical line over. You can see it on the drawing. Ten space seven slash sixteen. Okay. And that's to the outside edge of the pipe. So if I copy this pipe now from this point right to here, it should end up approximately on the uh, portion of the tire that we want to keep. So if I do um, I want to cut this off so that it's uh, so we're gonna let's try this and see if I can. See if it'll let me take the bottom off in it. Yep. So this is like the front fork. Um, now we have a crossbar, and the top of the crossbar height is actually um, well. We should probably cut the bottom of these tires off at nine inches below the center line. So what we're going to do this will be easy. I'm just gonna just gonna draw a box here and uh, 
left and right mouse button, hit O and go down nine inches and just draw a box. And I went from that center point, so now I'll just move that box over so it encompasses both tires. And what we want to do is use that box to cut the bottom off those tires so that it lines up with this plate. Now that plate is I gotta find out what the thickness of that plate is. One quarter inch by two foot with two mounting holes. I think um, looks like it's a a um, quarter inch steel plate. So what I want to do is bump this box up one quarter inch. 0.25. And then we're going to cut it. And when you cut this, you want to make sure that you cut all the way through and keep the profile because we need to do two cuts. First this one, and then this one, and then you can cut the profile. Now, what we have is an 83 inch by quarter inch by six inch plate on the bottom. If we rotate this to an isometric view, we can draw this plate anywhere out here. Let's change the color to something else. So I'm just going to hit T for top. And we know this is 83 inches by 6 inches by 0 0.25. If we rotate it to a top view, we can move this. And I want to, you know, I guess I can do it this way. Just remember, I still have my key lock. Oops, come on. There we go. Move this to the center. Roll it up to front view. We want to find the center point of this plate. I'll hit F and enter, and we want to line that up with the center point of our tires. And now all we want to do is bring this straight up, hit enter, and lock it to the bottom of the tire. So now we have the actual plate. So if we rotate this to an isometric view, do an illustration, there's our bike mount with the plates on the bottom. So this is uh, its kind of a weird looking bike rack, but uh, we'll see how it works out in the end. We'll go back to our wireframe, do a fit view. Now we can measure up from this. So we know that uh, the horizontal crossbar is at 35 inches from the top. So or from the bottom of the plate. So I'm just going to take my smart line. We'll change to a different color here for each part. Left and right on the bottom of the plate, hit O and go up 35 inches and just draw a horizontal line. Now I'm going to shorten that line up. Actually I shouldn't even have to. Let's just extrude it just like the same size as the other ones. And then we do a keep last on the subtract solids. I should be able to delete this end of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then do the same thing to this pipe and delete this end of it. So again, when we look at this as an illustration, you can see our, our pipes are starting to show up. Now we have a little diagonal piece now that needs to come up from this portion of the tire up. <coughs> Excuse me. That is at an angle of 130 and a half degrees from this angle line right here. So what I'm going to do is just trace a line along this center point. I'll just hit spacebar N. And then we're going to rotate that. Oh, I see. Hold on. Let me do this in a thicker line style so you can see it. If I go right from this point to this point, and it still doesn't want to show up, I'm going to select that line, okay? And what I want to do is rotate that. It says 130.5.
Let's try negative. If it goes the wrong way, I always just key in negative. And I'm going to go right to that point. You see how that comes right down to the tire? Let's go ahead and extend that line just so we don't lose anything. I'm going to use my get the right tool here. 74. Just grab this line and extend it down. And we'll extend this line up. Now let's see if we can do this crossbar. Again, we'll extrude it, same size as the other pipes. And we're going to do a subtraction, boolean subtraction, keeping the last. And we should be able to take the end pieces off in this after the fact. So we start to see our our bike taking shape. We have handlebars that are uh, 12 and a quarter inch outside diameter circle. Um, shows a radius of I'm trying to figure out R six and three sixteenths. I don't sure exactly what that means. Oh, six and three sixteenths. I see. Okay, we'll just cut it at six and three sixteenths. Yep, we'll see how that works. Okay, let's just draw a circle first. Let's change. I'm going to change my color. You don't have to change your colors. I'm just doing that so things kind of show up a little bit better. Do a fit view circle tool. We know it's 12 and a quarter, so it's going to be minus 2 and a quarter inch for the diameter of the pipe. So we're going to type in ten, uh, 5 inch radius. Gives us a 10 inch diameter. We're going to extrude this. And I'm going to grab this. Um, what I want to do is cut six and three sixteenths off from it. I'm trying to figure out the best way to put the angle on it. Looks like it's a 43 degree angle off vertical. Okay, so we'll figure that out in a minute. Let's just take a box and just draw a box here. I'm going to move that box up to the top of the circle and then we're just going to move it down a distance of 6 space 3 slash 16 and then we'll cut it. It's actually right in halves pretty much but we'll go ahead and cut it. We don't need to keep the profile. Okay. And we need to rotate that 43 degrees. So we should take our rotate tool, we'll type in 43, just left click, that's the angle of our handlebar, I didn't really need to copy it so I'll delete this one. And then we're going to take that and move it from this point right to the back edge right here. I can delete this vertical line. And I think what we want to do is actually um, do the boolean difference this pipe to this pipe and we actually look at this in an isometric with some rendering on here that's what our pipe is going to look like the last thing we well I shouldn't say the last thing the next thing we're going to do is there's actually a couple things let's do the seat we'll put the seat on here and the seat's a little it's a little strange. They don't give us a lot of dimensions on it. They tell us it's 13 and a half inches, uh, one inch back from the center line, and then they've got an odd design. We'll just kind of freehand this one. So this one really doesn't have a lot of uh, information. Uh, we'll go ahead and kind of take what they give us. So we'll come up here. We know that the top of the seat is at 40 and three quarter inches from this bottom of this plate. I'm going to use yellow. I'm going to grab the bottom of this plate, hit O. We're going to go up 40 space 
3 slash 4 just draw a horizontal line okay we know that it's one inch back from here so left and right O go back one inch just draw a vertical line and we know that from the drawings that this is 13 and a half inches long so we type in 13.5 there's the length of our seat um, <coughs> I'm just gonna kind of do a smart line let's trim this here and here two points to their intersection so we have the endpoints grab this endpoint hit my tilde key we're gonna come back I'm gonna put the radius on the back end of this seat kind of emulating what they have kind of like and again you can just kind of freehand this a little bit I'll hit V and we'll just draw this out. So once you get a shape, don't worry too much about it. We'll put a uh, half inch radius 7Q construct circular fillet. We'll put in 0 0.5. See what 0 0.5 does for us here. Uh, should be good. Truncate both. Come on. Come on, you worked before. I guess I gotta drop it now. There. Now I'll drop this one to this one. Delete this back line. We'll give it a little radius on the back edge of a half inch. So that's good enough for a seat shape. Let's make a shape out of it using our 6 3 tool. Automatic there's our seat shape. If we look at the top that seat shape is pretty wide so I'm just gonna again they don't really give us a width on that so if I hit the top or excuse me the front view and select that shape because I, I won't be able to see it when I put it back in the top view and pull this out I'm just gonna move this out now you can see the profile I'm bringing out and that's going to stick out just beyond the edge about this far. Now what I want you to do is I want you to extrude that just half the distance. So we're going to grab this and pull it in, hit enter and just go halfway. zoom in on it. thought I turned that off but I guess it was on the other view. Okay. And again you can see by the shape of it that we need to do a little cutout here. Just inside the tube we're going to take a just take a box and draw it about right here and I want you to uh, to cut that <coughs> then we can uh, we'll take a smart line just draw a bevel on this edge and cut that again it's just eyeball because they don't really give us the dimensions on this so we're just going to try to guess it how it is and then roll this up into an isometric view and what we want to do is kind of fill at the edges around here with about a quarter inch so we don't have any sharp edges so take except for this inside don't do anything there so we're going to take our 3D construct fillets at 0.25 we want to do this outside edge here this outside edge that outside edge okay roll it to a top view we want to mirror that to the other side on a horizontal axis 
you want to say make copy just bring it to the center bring it back up to an isometric we're going to boolean those two shapes together this shape and this shape so they become one I see I need to eh, I didn't like that so let's try an eighth inch and see if that works that works so if we look at it as an illustration looks good but kinda hard to set on right there so we need to uh, roll it to a front view and kinda cut that seat out uh, what we're gonna do is do a boolean difference keep the last between this pipe and this shape and then we're gonna cut or just remove the top of the pipe now at this point I think we can probably delete some of these center lines and <coughs> now what we have are some pipes going up through the tires that are smaller diameter they're three quarter inch tubes starting in the center so let's change to I don't really like using purple I'll use this brown color and just draw a line straight up right to about the center of the tire like that and then extend that line straight down to the top of the plate. If we use our extrusion tool again and now we're going to change this will be a solid pipe so we put zero for the inside radius uh, it's a three quarter inch diameter so we're going to type in half of three quarters is um, three eighths so we just type in three slash eight and we just left click on that line these pipes are spaced at two and a quarter inches apart so just take your copy tool and we're going to go 2.25 and let it index to that all the way across you'll start to see these pipes stick out of the top and then start over here do the same thing and then what we're going to do is subtract keeping the last we want to go this pipe to this this pipe to this to this all the way until we get to the center one and then we'll uh, oops missed one so if we do that we should be able to take our selection tool drag through those and just hit delete if we select all four of those pipes now we should be able to copy those from the end point of this line to the end point of this line and we can also delete this horizontal line now so we start to see our isometric view there's our bike rack um, it's going to have some mounting holes on this so it would get bolted down to a piece of concrete they don't really give us the details so we don't really need it um, let's uh, let's make this entire piece they call it a big red bike rack so let's paint the whole thing red just say settings um, rendering materials go to palette open clear coat paints see what that looks like and let's see brown bisque dark red and I want it shiny metallic yeah Give it a little brighter finish So if I select this, I want to assign it to the seat first of all. Not sure why it's there we go. You have to use the attach, not assign.
So no matter where this goes, this will have this material attached to it. So that's why I'm doing each individual piece separately. Even though they're all the same color. There's our bike rack, just like it's drawn. Closed out the material. I'm going to do a file save settings, just be sure. Let's go to our settings, rendering, materials. Oh, excuse me. Settings, rendering, light manager. Sorry about that. We're going to click on solar. Double click so the solar comes on. Um, We'll give it um, a date, tell it it's 12-6-2009, uh, and I'm going to put a time of day on here so this kind of shows up a little brighter. can be anything. You know, look at it, you can see how it's picking up the shadows on one side and not the other. It looks pretty good. What you're going to do now is give it some perspective. We can use this perspective tool and just kind of you can just push with your mouse. Not too much, something like that. So when it rolls around we get that perspective. That's a bike that's the bike rack. We want to be able to send this to somebody so you can see what it is. So the assignment's gonna be a 3D PDF. We're gonna do a file print. Say file, select Bentley driver, and I'm gonna go to my Documents, CT120CJ, Utilities, there's my printer, which is a PDF printer. We want to tell it to print to 3D. We'll go to Settings, 3D Plotting. Uh, put my mess resolution around 2000 or so. Large size, medium, no animation. It's going to be a shaded solid. Let's go with... Uh, shaded illustration instead. Place walk on the PDF is good, just hit OK. I think my computer's thinking so. And hit print. We're going to put it in our My Documents CT120 homework this is going to be assignment 16 bike or actually put your initials your name bike rack hit save I'll close out my print leave microstation open just minimize it I'm going to go to my Windows Explorer. I want to go check this print before I dump it into the first class folder for the final assignment. Um, go to my documents, CT120CJ, homework, assignment 16, bike rack, thing stuff, view for the final exam. So I'll have some discussion points there and some ideas on what you can do. Um, there's our our bike. I'll turn the lights on. It's a little bright, but it's what I'm looking for. So people can look at it. They can turn it around. If I had a client that I manufactured these bikes on, I want them to be able to go take a look at what it's going to look like in 3D. I'd just be able to send this to them really quickly and say, there's the bike rack. It bolts onto a piece of concrete. It's kind of dorky looking, but uh, it tells, it lets people know that it's something you can attach a bike to. So that's what you're going to uh, assign. It won't be printable, just or you can print it out if you want any anyway, or send it to your parents to put on the on their computer. But anyway, uh, that's what you send in. Drop the PDF, 3D PDF, into the folder, and make sure that your name is is on the file name so that I can check it off and make sure you get a grade for it. Okay, and I will see you. Well, I see you in class. I hope. Uh, make sure that. 
Wednesday's class should be full attendance. There really won't be any video going out. It's going to be review for the final. Um, it's probably not going to be a whole class. Come in. Uh, we'll go over what's going to happen on the final. Uh, it's really no no videos for the final. Sorry, uh, but you got you got to be in class. So um, be there, be square, and um, hopefully we can get everybody caught up to where they need to be. All right. Thanks.